Hi, this time let's try to maximize the dynamic range that we get out of footage shot in log. First, let me try and explain what really happens when we process log footage in post. And then I'll give you an example shot with this camera, the GH5, with V-Log, how you can get more out of the V-Log when it comes to dynamic range. And again, I will go rather quickly, so if you have any questions or need clarification, ask me on the comments below or send me a message if you're part of my Facebook Messenger list. Okay, let's just jump on the computer. This is a frame from a video that I uploaded a few days ago. And as you can see, this is a scene where there's a lot of dynamic range. So it means that there is very bright areas and there's very dark areas. And if I apply a normal translation lookup table uh, to get the colors from Vlog to Rec. 709, making them look normal, you can see that I lose all the details in the shadows. So if I can see them, why do I lose them when I uh, translate them to Rec. 709? And let me try and explain it in the form of a diagram. So let's start with the histogram. Histogram is basically a diagram that tells you how much of dark and how much mid gray and how much highlight uh, pixels you have in your scene. For example, if this would re represent the dynamic range of this scene, this part on the left would uh, represent the dark parts and the, this long tail would represent the highlights to the sky. So when we shoot any scene, we basically capture the data from reality through our sensor and through the processor inside our camera into some kind of a color profile. So in this case, this was shot in V-Log. So V-Log has rather good dynamic range. So I was able to capture almost all of the dynamic range of that, that was present in reality when I was uh, filming. Uh, though it's debatable how much of the shadow is really captured because there's a lot of noise and color noise. Uh, so, well, some should say that it's not captured, but I'll maybe show you a technique how you can salvage part of that uh, dynamic range as well. And the reason why log footage looks very uncontrasty and flat is the reason that we, in order to be able to show the whole dynamic range inside our Rec. 709 displays, so basically our computers, our cell phones and most of our televisions, to be able to show, show it inside the Rec. 709, we have to compress, we have to kind of lift the shadows and we have to uh, bring down the highlights in order to get it to fit inside the Rec. 709. So basically this footage that you see here, as you can see on the histogram, this histogram is very compressed. The reason is this, that to be able to see it all, you have to bring it inside the boundaries of uh, Rec. 709. But there is a way how we can conserve the contrast and the punchiness of the footage and still bring the shadows, for example, the shadows, we can bring them inside the boundaries of the Rec. 709. Uh, and uh, let me show you how that's done. Okay, let's return to the original footage. This lookup table that I normally use for, to translate uh, colors from VLOG to Rec. 709 works for most use cases. But when there is a situation that has a lot of dynamic range, I've created another lookup table. And already you can see much more details in the shadow areas. You can download this uh, lookup table for high dynamic range scenes from the same place as you can download the other one. So join my Facebook Messenger list and you will get access to my download vault where you can uh, download all of these assets that I create in these episodes of mine. And how to join, you might ask? Well, there's a link in the description and in the end of this video. So, see you there. This lookup table is a very good start, but it's just a start. Next, I will show you a technique that you cannot achieve with any lookup table. So let's do it. This technique that I'm gonna show you is very simple, so you can use Premiere or Final Cut, but I like to use After Effects for this. So if you're not familiar with After Effects, these things on the bottom, these are basically layers and this is a video timeline, so very similar to Photoshop. And the same way as in Photoshop, things happen in order, but in After Effects things happen from bottom to top. So this adjustment layer happens before this adjustment layer and then this happens and this happens and this happens. Okay, so first I added the same lookup table to translate the colors to Rec. 709. Before going into the translation, I added two adjustment layers with a simple curves effect with a mask. So this curves effect is only limited to this mask area. 
and I use the feather tool in After Effects to really dial in where I want this effect to be applied. And the same thing on the right. And Curves is a very simple tool, but very powerful. You really should learn it if you haven't already. Basically, you can set exposure and contrast with the same tool. But anyway, <clears throat> so these two uh, bring out the dark and kind of like fill lighting them in post. And then I added the same Curves adjustment layer to the ground, giving it a bit more color and pop. And then I again did the same thing to the sky. Here's the mask, here's the effect. And then when I kind of individually with these local adjustments uh, compress the dynamic range to fit better inside the Rec. 709 bounds, I added one more curves adjustment layer to give it overall a bit more contrast. And then I added a simple uh, lookup table to give it more cinematic coloring. And the idea here is not to bring the dark areas to normal exposure. The idea is the dark areas stay dark, and I can see detail there. And I want to mention that the idea of this technique is not to create an HDR colorful cloud vomit imagery. The idea is to increase the dynamic range of your footage, but still have it looking very natural, aka cinematic. And then when we lift shadows this aggressively, we introduce a lot of noise, and especially color noise. And let me show you a technique how to get rid of color noise. First, let me show you what is color noise. Let's see if you can see this through the YouTube compression. Color noise is this green, red, annoying grain that you can see in the shadows. And the trick to get rid of color noise is rather simple to do, but a bit harder to understand. So let me try and explain it very quickly. So the trick is to blur the color channel in the shadow areas. So only blur colors, not the luminance values. So you can do it by duplicating the uh, original footage and then applying a smart blur. Uh, and this will basically blur uh, all flat areas and preserve detail. And then apply color lending mode so it will only affect the color channels. And then you can use the extract effect to limit uh, the effect to only shadow areas. If you want to know more, ask me in the comments. And remember, if you want to download the lookup table that I created for high dynamic range scenes, just join my messenger list and I will send it to you. See you in the next video.